let's make an incredibly delicious homemade pizza together. Even if you're just starting out in the kitchen, you'll be able to follow along by carefully watching until the end. 240 milliliters of warm water are poured into a bowl. The water gently swirls in the bowl. Five grams of salt are added, followed by five grams of sugar. A beautiful, magical spatula, the color of a sea wave, Grace Feudiers the water, dissolving the salt and sugar. Five grams of dry yeast are sprinkled into the bowl. The yeast dances on the surface of the water. The spatula gently stirs the mixture again, ensuring the yeast dissolves completely. Seven grams of vegetable oil are added, creating a delicate swirl on the surface. 140 grams of flour measured in a 240 milliliter glass are gradually added to the bowl, but we'll be adding more, so focus closely. The spatula smoothly mixes the flour and water, creating a wet, flowing dough. I'm showing you the whole process with all the details so you can replicate this recipe. Folding motion of the spatula is mesmerizing. At this point, it will seem too loose and sticky, so have another cup of flour ready to go in. The flour creates a small cloud as it's added to the bowl. The dough is mixed thoroughly. The spatula works the dough transforming it from a wet batter to a soft, cohesive mass. You know, this process of kneading the dough reminds me of when I was a kid spending summers at my grandma's house. Her kitchen always smelled like fresh bread and simmering sauces. Whenever I'm kneading dough now, I can't help but be transported back to those special moments in her kitchen. Did you have to knead dough when you were a kid? And what are your childhood memories of your grandmother? One tablespoon of flour, piled high, is added to the bowl. This final addition of 50 grams of flour helps achieve the perfect dough consistency. The spatula carefully incorporates the final bit of flour. The dough becomes more elastic and starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl. If your dough still seems a little sticky or loose after kneading for a while, don't be afraid to add just a bit more flour, a tablespoon at a time. The bowl is covered and placed in a warm place to rise for one hour to one hour and a half. After the rise time, generously flour your work surface because this dough will be delicate and sticky. Gently release the dough from the bowl onto the floured area. You can see how pillowy and airy it looks. Fold it over on itself to form a neat ball giving it a tiny quarter turn, so the folds end up on the bottom. Here's the trick. Stream a tablespoon of oil over the top of the dough ball and use your fingers to spread it all over the surface. This will allow you to easily shape the pizza without sticking and give it a nice browning during baking. Lightly flour the top and use your hands to begin stretching and pressing the dough into a thin circle. I'll then roll it out further with a pin to get it nice and even. Finally, I'll go back to stretching and shaping by hand one last time to achieve the ideal thin, even base before adding toppings. 
let me grab all those random leftovers and scraps from the fridge, because today's masterpiece is about to become the ultimate fridge clean-out special. For an even quicker no-need, no-yeast dough that doesn't require any proofing time, be sure to subscribe, because that's coming up next. Let me know if you have any other questions. Bye.